Hey everyone, welcome back to the VWID Talk podcast. We are Wes and Jan, and we are so glad that you're here. If you're passionate about Volkswagen or about EVs in general, make sure to hit that subscribe button right now. Uh, and don't forget, you can also catch us on your favorite podcast platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or Overdrive, and of course, here on YouTube for a visual experience. Um, Jan and I, and particularly Jan, have been working for months on this project, uh, which we alluded to in our last episode about steering wheel buttons. And I'm happy to say, look what Jan has built. You hear that nice, satisfying click? Yes, that's the click of Audi using mechanical key switches for their buttons. Um, and I want to brag, Jan designed this part. Uh, so last time with the steering wheel buttons, we talked about how everything fit together uh, beautifully without modification. This is a much more complicated mod, but I think that you will find it's the, the juice is worth the squeeze as it were uh so jan this is this is your baby and you you really did amazing work to figure this out why don't you tell us what you've done here we moved from the <laughs> looks so good two button switches yes to the four button switches and you can see the actual uh photo from my car before and after yeah it looks really great that's 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 beautiful so as you see, uh, one, two versus one, two, three, four. Yay! Mm -hmm. All right. So you might yeah. be asking why four window switches. So in my mind, the two window switches are not bad idea if executed well. And I'm not sure how all of you love this rear button uh, yeah. that we all had on those old switches. Yeah. Well, uh, I did not enjoy that uh, yeah. that much. I literally cursed at that last night. I was in the car. I was like, I'm so glad we're recording this episode today because I tried to roll down my window to let a mosquito out or something. And I hit the rear button. And I think this whole thing would have been better if it was just a physical push button yes. that yes. locks down into yes. the rear position. Yes. Right? Yes. But... Yes. Yes, exactly. But that wasn't um, the entire challenge that I had with this button. Um, but mm. as you see, there's no ge geometry that would help you find the button blindly, right? So you literally yeah. have to look where the button is and mm -hmm. the button lights up, but yes, it lights up, but it's lights up below your finger. So you don't see if it lit up. Okay, well, yeah. great, um, cool. And then I also many time accidentally bumped into this button, lock. which is the child lock. So I if you hear that. this weird clicking from the back, that's the child lock. And it happened to me so many times. Yeah, me too. I've hit that a lot as well. Yeah. Particularly when my kids are trying to get out of the car at school in the morning. And then that's very frustrating. Um, so you've written down the, I think we just kind of covered the reasons, but there's not only is it hidden under your finger, but there's no haptic feedback at all for that. Exactly. Reason. There's no haptic feedback. And we did an episode about uh, buttons and touch yeah. buttons with and without haptic feedback. So check that out. Uh, we yeah. link it right here. And by the way, um, I uh, created some hack because you know me. Uh, so I created some hack to the bottom here. So I added a vibration motor um, and I linked it to the LED uh, and it's on my GitHub page. I'll link it uh, down below. Yeah. So every time you press it, it the, the motor oh. keeps vibrating so it's not perfect but it was no. okay so i survived for a couple of years but yeah. there is there is a better solution i forgot that you did that that's really that's amazing but this solution is going to make everybody happier exactly exactly so, so why four switches well uh you can open um any window with of course any switch that um is, is mapped to each window as in uh, other cars that you might be uh used to yeah um it um, also, I, I went back to my cross breeze pattern. I'm not sure if somebody out, out there is the cross breeze pattern person, meaning opening left, front, and rear right window. Oh, and yeah, okay. It was almost impossible to do with the rear button. Gotcha. And um, there is, of course, a little downside is that now. This is one assembly that VW had that had everything, meaning the, of course, the child lock, uh, the window switches, the mirror adjustment, and also lock and unlock button. Yeah. Now, this mod actually converts it into the physically three different components. So there are there's some wiring and there, there are more things to worry about, but I feel like it's much more accessible for me as a, as a user. So that's why that's why I, I like it. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the retrofit itself. 
So okay. as Wes mentioned, we have this retrofit framework, how it mechanically fits. So can you drop it in? How it fits electrically? So can you plug it in into an existing harness? Or is the module that um, needs to be reading all these signals good enough in the car or do you need to upgrade that module? And then is there any adaptation or uh, long coding setting that you need to do? For this one, mechanically, I specifically say it's hard because uh, we need to design some specific uh, parts that, of course, don't exist OEM. And uh, we need to cut into uh, the existing trim so we can drop this in. Electrically, um, it's relatively easy. Um, the harness that you need for this mod and a harness that you need to integrate into your existing harness. So it's not necessarily just like plug and play, but the good news is that the door module has all those functions. So you don't have to worry about the door module, um, but you have to only worry about the electrical connection and adaptation, uh, very easy. Okay. So doing the retrofit, once you have the 3D printed part, uh, it's not that hard. So this is how it looks. So this is my close up with the <laughs> latest, uh, latest print. And yes, so I great. still don't have that piano black uh, handle snapped in because I'm still mm, fine tuning some, some things. So I need to open it and close it. And you don't want to break it by opening and closing. <laughs> exactly. Over and yeah. and it, okay. it's already so fragile. Like those pins are so fragile. Yeah. But I wanted to say real quick about this, Jan, how, first of all, Jan designed this part. You can tell it was 3D printed if you look closely, but I think it looks so good you can barely tell. Yep. But the nice thing is that in the Audi, this comes in many, many different models of exactly. Audi. The way it's designed, the mirror switch is, is usually set further apart than this, mm -hmm. depending on the mm -hmm. model of the car. Mm -hmm. And because they're separate pieces, you can pop them both out of the trim and you were able to bring them closer yes. together. So that really made it to where you were able to fit them into that trim. Yes. And I love that you also have all the same functions. You've got left and right mirror adjustment. Yep. You've got mirror folding button and the, yep. the heated mirror heated. defrost. Yep. Um, and so we could take two pieces that might've been out here in an Audi and put them close together and they fit almost perfectly in here. Yep. Yeah, um, they do. And I, and say, I... yeah, mm -hmm. I was just say the whole hardest part of this mod had to be designing that piece. But I'm sorry, what were you about to say about that? You no, know, I, I just wanted to say that I just uh, copied the layout from the Q4 e-tron. Um, oh, okay. I, I wanted to transfer over some of the interior or some of the door trim, but it's very different shape, even despite it's the same car, same platform of mm -hmm. the car, um, the shape of the trim is different. So I couldn't just drop the Audi uh, trim. Um, I just had to manufacture the interface, the physical interface for uh, the VW. Of course, and that would be ideal if you could have just pop the Audi trim off and pop it onto your Audi 4. Exactly, but, exactly, uh, exactly, exactly. And this is how it uh, how it looks. This is one of my uh, early uh, prototypes. And uh, you see, I have been iterating. I really love that uh, when you're 3D printing, you can iterate very fast. So uh, yeah. one of those early prints were really a couple minutes. And then I do every um, prototype in red so I can perfectly see um, the um, the gaps and make yeah. sure that I dial, dialed in those gaps. Okay, so it's easier to see if something's misaligned uh -huh. or doesn't yeah, fit on Yeah, exactly. Okay, and here's your CAD model. Okay. This is the, yeah, this is the CAD model in Fusion 360. And um, this is how it looks. Uh, it took me a couple of days to get to a very good fit, um, but I also um, included or designed these uh, specific uh, cut plates so I can, uh, because there is some physical cutting of uh, the piano gloss um, handle yeah. that, uh, because this is little okay. uh, longer. So this is so you can put that down and actually and actually use it as a template to cut it. Exactly, your... exactly, okay. exactly, exactly, exactly. And then, uh, and then when I uh, dropped it into the um, slicer for the 3D printer, this is how it looked. And if I go into the preview, you see that I had to use the supports, of course, that, that makes sense. And um, it printed for about uh, three hours. And this is uh, PETG, um, very nice, like relatively shiny. So it matches with the piano glass, uh, piano uh, gloss uh, part that we have on the, on the board, uh, in the car already. Okay, well, I think it looks great. And then uh, this is actually the piano gloss piece. These, um, these, piece, these parts of the trim, like on the top, like I had to cut out this part and also the same thing on the bottom here. Mm -hmm. and, and so you taped it with painter's tape to make it less likely that you would skate across. Scratch it. Stuff exactly, on, yeah. exactly, exactly. Okay. And because I designed the drill template, so I drilled like four holes in the corner. Um, they, they are very nice, nicely round. And I just literally cut, as, as you see, 
um, in the red line here, indicated in the red line here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So cut cut smaller. You can always make it bigger. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And it was uh, it was um, relatively. It was not easy. People need patience <laughs> for this because if it it has to be perfect, right? Did you use an oscillating saw or a Dremel or what did you do? I you? have um, at the end. I have decided to use a hot uh, hot knife. So it's literally a attachment for my soldering iron. Uh, that is a knife. Oh, that's beautiful. So the the nice thing is to set people's mind at ease. This is the only part that needs to be cut to make this work. And this trim piece is between twenty five and forty dollars yes. from the yes. dealership. So yes. if it you mess it up, yes. it's not the end of the world. Exactly. Um, exactly. Thank you. Thank you. That's really good. That's really good point. That's really good point. In fact, I have I have two spares right now. <laughs> you do have two spares almost, okay. for when I attempt, I just bought them because I wanted to attempt this myself, and so I haven't cool. cut them yet. So cool. cool. And this is how it looks in in uh, inside because of course to do this mod you have to drop the uh, door trim. And this, this mod is done only on the driver's side, so it's only one door. And what you see here, uh, here inside this, is the um, door control door module. Control. Yeah. And right here, this is a connector that um, is very densely populated in the module. But uh, when you would see the ID4 harness, it has only a couple wires in there. And so yeah. what you actually then need to do is um, Kind of create the harness, um, create a harness that would um, introduce all these different connections for the mm -hmm. new modules and connect into this one um, connector. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And and here's a time lapse how I how I made the harness. So uh, you see, it uh, starts very hairy, and then as I uh, wrapped it up, it uh, it uh, started looking. Uh, Looks quite, like it belongs there. Quite, yeah. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, thank you for that. So, to give you all a sense of um, where we were and uh, what we um, introduced by this harness, so this is the original connector that connects the two window switches. I kept it there, and that's uh, this, one connector. That that's that one connector that has the lock and the mirror switches and the window. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's all in one module, and we know why it's done like that, right? Mm -hmm. um, the the word is spelled C O S T. Uh, and then, uh, yes. and then uh, this is another connect. This is the new connector for the windows switches, right? Yeah. So that's the black connector. And then okay. this this four pin connector is for a lock and unlock button. Okay. Um, the brown one. I haven't, uh, I, I haven't situated that one yet. So that one is like TBD mm. yet. Okay. And then um, here, the one that is hiding right here below is for the mirror switch. The mirror switch. Gotcha. Okay. And then it kind of plugs in, and uh, once you once you're ready, uh, it's it's all there. So, <laughs> so so, good. so where we are today? Well, uh, this is a, a pretty um, solid, uh, I would say, post uh, POC, post uh, proof of concept stage. I've been driving with the car for a couple of weeks now, and I really I really love it. I've dialed in the um, the three D uh, model a little bit, but uh, so it's it, it's perfectly flush now mm -hmm. and all the switches operate very nicely. So um, the good news is that the door module that at least I had in my 2021 ID4 can accept the four window switch. I was worried that I would need to upgrade that module that uh, would be then a little harder. Uh, the only caveat, of course, is that I had to uh, fabricate a custom harness and 3D print the parts that are needed for the physical yep. fitment. Uh, and as Wes mentioned on the beginning, this this mod gives you a big choice of what switches do you want to use. Do you want yeah. to use the switches from Volkswagen, from Jetta, or Atlas, or Skoda, yeah. ENIAC, or do you really want to use the Q4 e-tron switches that that yeah. I mm, mm, use that are yes. very clicky? So, and I think I'll, I'll add to that. I've actually I've got the Skoda mirror controller and switches. And the Skoda switches are the exact same part number as the Volkswagen Atlas switches. Um, and so we're, we're going to keep experimenting on this. We've got to work with the door lock um, and see to get that work working. But we also are going to see if we can find a way to get a harness that's plug and play that may not be possible, uh, but you'll have choices, right? The Audi parts are yep. usually going to be higher quality parts. Uh, maybe the Volkswagen 
maybe the Volkswagen parts look better when they get fitted into your car, uh, look more like a Volkswagen. We'll see. I, I think they, I think the Audi parts look great in there, Jan. Yep. Yep. But yeah, uh, we got some more work, but this is great because you've, you've been using this for several exactly. weeks. Yes. It works yes. And, yes. I have been, I've been using this and, um, uh, Please follow us on the VWID talk forum. Uh, we are also adding link down below to the video uh, to the page where we are discussing the latest innovation. And um, we also will uh, post the table of what are the part numbers uh, for each um, type of type of mod. But keep in mind that if you go with the Volkswagen or Skoda or Audi switches, the 3D uh, the 3D printed part would need to be different. So. Keep yeah. that in mind. Volkswagen and Skoda will be different from your Audi part. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Cool. So thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and catch us with the next episode. And I'm thinking there might be more buttons. No? I can see buttons in our future. I see. Amazing. Yes. Same here. <laughs> same here. So please subscribe so you don't miss it. Thank you. Bye. Thanks.